Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, welcome to the video. Today we're going to be building a React app of every player in the NBA. So, very simple, single page app. Got every player's name there and a little bit of info about them. Very easy. Uh, websites like this exist, but we are, if you need something like this, something simple like this for uh, maybe a bigger project that you're taking on, I'm going to show you how you can take an idea that you think you should have a uh, very easy access to and stand up an app for it very quickly. And uh, you can do this for really anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be the NBA. Um, you just have to ask the right questions. So uh, let's get right into it. Um, this is available on GitHub. Um, this one's called react.nba. So you've got the start and finish files here. The readme is very simple this time. Just clone this and um, if you want to follow along open up the start files and just run your um, package manager so then you'll have all the node modules and um, we will be able to start developing okay so here is what the app looks like we will do a quick little demo um, just very simple bare bones react app um, <coughs> And here is our card with all the players. Each player has a card. You can click on their name and reveal their ID, name. Yeah, I know the name is right there. Why well, put it there? Um, <laughs> their position, their height, and their team. Um, yes, the ID is completely irrelevant. I put it there because it was there. Uh, and then the team will also link to a, the team's page. So. Um, then we could go here and we'll see the Trailblazers page and all the Trailblazers um, players. Uh, a little bit of info about the Trailblazers right here. We're not going to beat this to death here because you will see that the concepts get repetitive as um, we continue to develop. But uh, this is the ugliest NBA app of all time. We're not teaching any CSS today. We're really just saying, here is how you go from, I want to have a base app of every player in the NBA that I'm going to do something with. How do I do that? I'm going to show you. So uh, open up the start files and they will look something like this, run npm start, yarn start, whatever you use, and you will get this uh, nice little app with nothing in it. Go to the app and we'll see our all players card. No players in there yet. Um, now we're going to go through getting the data. So <coughs> I, I did this with Python, but um, it's really just, you, you could do all of this right in JavaScript. And if you run this script, it will create the player names, JSON. I've already done all this for you. You guys don't even have to do any of this. I'm just kind of explaining the process here. And beautiful, you get this list of all, every player in the NBA. You know, it's 500 long, uh, so that seems correct. Next step, uh, what's some other stuff about them? Because we don't just want uh, their names that would make for way too boring of a website we want some data about these players that uh, can be useful to our user so uh, next script this could have been done in one script I just wanted to be able to explain it that way um, we first of all consume our player names JSON so what we're doing uh, here is opening that file so opening that and uh, creating it as a list. So now we have our list of names. And then I found this API where um, maybe we'll, just, we'll just open this. Um, you can pretty much just get some data about any basketball player that ever uh, was around. Um, so you go to players, get, yeah, pretty much, it tells you how to get to it, so 
players right here. And then uh, you use this search method to um, search for whatever player you want. So if I just put John, um, then yeah, that's not going to work. Going to want to spell John, right? Uh, then we get all these players that, uh, this is like every John of all time in the NBA. So what we want to do with this new script is take all of the players in our list of names here and feed it to this API. And then grab, you know, for each result, you get uh, first last name and, um, you know, height. Just some other stuff. I just wanted any data, so this was enough. Uh, stuff about their team, too. Um, so, yeah, if you have in here exactly what exactly the name that you're looking for, you'll only get one result. So, here we'll just put wall and um, John. Wallace. Oh, wow. So, I'm not sure how that worked out, but um, didn't mess up my app, but I guess yeah, there's other people who will uh, satisfy the name John Wall. Um, anyway, that is not important if you, you know, if you put any of these in here. The idea is Um, you're going to get the name that you, you're going to get the guy that you want, you know. Um, so there he is. Oh, you know what it was? I think um, John Wall worked because whatever I did in web scraping was um, just taking the first or only, only taking kind of this object because I wanted to avoid getting, getting that all in there all those times. Um, so anyway... Yeah, same process here. Um, we've got our URL and we've got our list of names and it's go to the URL, do our requests, and then do some stuff with, uh, we didn't even use beautiful soup this time, but it's like move, move around um, your response so that you uh, have it in the format you want. Uh, append it append it to a list I named this test because I'm a jerk um, forgot to make that something more useful and then dump it into a JSON file and here uh, we're actually doing we're doing this 500 times so eventually it returned a 429 which is just this API saying hey you're, you're requesting too many times um, so here I said if it returns 429, then uh, time sleep, which is just wait 60 seconds and then go back, keep going. So this has to wait a minute, like probably 10 times when, when you run this script. You guys don't have to do that, but this guy will take about like 15 minutes to, to run. And then you get your stats, which is a list of every player and um, each object is just something like this. Oh, so you've got, you know, ID, name, uh, everything, and then stuff about their team. Um, and this is like, you know, 15,000 lines long. So um, if I were doing this for a bigger app, I would have uh, probably not wanted team to be repeated 15 times for every team, but uh, uh, this was fine for storing right here. Um, and another thing I wanted to mention was since what we did was get these names from a website where I found it easy to get them and then feed them into uh, another, uh, an API, completely different system, um, they did not plug into each other perfectly. Um, 
And I figured that out because scrolling through this, uh, occasionally um, we would have just an empty object and it wouldn't have this, this data in here. And I had to resolve that by pretty much going through all of the ones that were empty, figuring out which player they were, and then going um, to this API and like doing some testing and figuring out, all right, how do I get that player's information? Because in here, um, there were like a, alt, alt codes, apostrophes, Roman numerals that were just um, not playing nice with this uh, API. So anytime you're getting data that's not proprietary, um, there will you'll need to do some cleaning of the data. And you know, my list of names worked 90% of the time. It fed right into the API and got what I wanted. But for those 10%, I had to go through and um, I just used some brute force and pretty much paste it in what will actually work for the API. Um, so that's just one of the nuances of uh, you, you know going through data that's not proprietary. Uh, and if you're smarter than me, you or a better developer, you can probably uh, write a script that will go through all of this and uh, ask some questions, get some answers, and kind of clean it up for you. Then you can kind of eliminate like 90% of your uh, your faults there, maybe even all of them. Um, but I was just doing this quickly, didn't want to spend too much time on any of that Python. So um, that worked for me. And now we have our data that we can begin to use. So back to our app. We want to throw our names into our section here where all the players go. We are going to begin, actually we'll just do a little tour. I'm going to show you the index, um, which we're not going to do anything in, but uh, here is kind of just, this is the, the header of the app, so you'll always see this on every page. That's what you're looking at right here. And then our router, um, this is how, you know, we when we go to the app component where we're routing, to the app component here. So uh, that's what this link goes to. Um, and that you, you'll see that's where we are. But what I also did was I made this nifty little loop where I just said um, object keys of stats. Stats is our, our player stats JSON. Uh, it didn't even really have to be object keys. Uh, you could just loop through stats, but the, you know, loop however you guys want. Um, and I just said, uh, start appending to this list um, the team ID. So I go in stats, I pass the element, and I say, go to the element, go to data, zero. That's how this, uh, this data is kind of structured for us. So I say, go to data, and then data is actually a list of these two object uh, of these two objects so I say go to zero the first one and then go to team and then go to ID and where am I uh, and I get that so we at and I'm saying if that ID is not already in our list. That is how you say that with index of. If it's not all, if teams index of the ID that we're looking at, if it's index of is negative one, that means it's not in the list. Um, then add it. So this pretty much lands us with a list of all the team's IDs. I think there's like 30. And we use that to create the routes to each team's profile. So then we say loop through or map over this team's um, list and create a route for each team that, see this is just a list of all the IDs. 
create a route that says teams and then the ID afterwards. Um, and then send and then send that to the teams component. So that was just how I handled routing. Um, really quick explanation, probably not the best, but uh, yeah, that was how I sent that through. Um, anyway, let's get into the app component. This is where everything is actually happening. So um, what we are going to do here, um, I have everything imported for us already, is um, just throw some data in there. So we are going to say stats, which is, once again, our player stats, dot map. And we want to go through each object in that stats and say, give me each element and give me its index as well. And then this scenario function we will um, create. And we just want to say, um, render a span with just L in it. Um, actually, no, render a span with um, what do we want? Because um, that won't work. We, we don't want to return the entire object, but we want to say Give me one with, give me a span with L dot um, data zero. So this is the same process going through our data um, dot first name. Yeah. Not sure if I need these curly braces here or not. Um, actually, yeah, I think I do. So, this gives us all of our first names. So, we're pulling some data from this JSON file into our component. And um, Jalen, there's our first one, obviously, ends with uh, this guy. <coughs> okay, cool. So now what we want to do, instead of um, kind of mapping this all here, we want to give each guy um, that space that, that we saw in the demo. So we're going to do this by, um, instead of just rendering the name, we're going to render a component, which will be HTML that we create in another file. So that's going to go in our player file, and I'll show, I'll explain how uh, these two files talk to each other and connect. So what we're going to do in player is um, we have these two containers. The uh, player renders a card, so that was what you saw in the demo, just a plain old bootstrap card, and. It has the header and the body. So in the header, we're going to put the player's name. And <clears throat> we'll make that a span. Um, probably don't have to, but we'll just do it. And in there, we are going to say this dot props dot name. Um, so, the way this is going to work is um, we are saying that a property of the player component is name, and we want you, the component, to take that name and put it in a span in the header of the card for each player that we're attempting to render. So how do we define this property? Well, first, 
we're going to do that back in our app component by <coughs> instead of just as we map over all of our stats, instead of just rendering a span, we're going to render the player component. And we're going to say name equals our stuff right here. Okay. So now, uh, beautiful, I know, um, we <laughs> have a card with each of our players' names. And uh, just to make everybody happy, we can um, add a space and also add again. Uh, last name. Nice, right? Um, so, yeah, there's our app. We've got all the players in their own separate card. And it looks good. Um, so let's just plow ahead here. We have rendered our player component and now we are going to want to below here um, render the rest of the data that we know we have access to. So what I'm going to do for that is pass the player component some more data and we could d keep doing this the same way as um, as we did with name but we're going to do this a little bit more efficiently so that we can group all of that, uh, all of the rest of that data together and kind of manipulate it the way that we want to um, later on in development. So we're just going to pass all of the data for each player to the player component and say, here it is, do whatever you want with it. That's all the app component is going to have to say. And in order to do that, we're going to create a new prop and just say, just call it details. And set that equal to L dot data zero. So nothing specific here. We're just giving it all of the info about the player. And now we'll go back into our player component. And down here, we could say, Um, something like, don't know why I did that, but this dot, um, props dot details, uh, dot data or no, that's got everything we want. We're all we're already in data zero. So dot um, height, and these come in two. So we'll just say height feet. And there you go. You get the the feet, the height and feet of each player in there. Um, so we can just throw a bunch of these in the card body, but um, I don't really want to do it like that. I want uh, to kind of make this app, uh, the structure a little bit smarter. So that's why I created this player's detail, um, player details uh, component where we're going to render all of the details uh, right in here to make things simple. So in here, we'll create a paragraph, and in there, let's just put um, a colon and a space, and then we'll add on to that uh, this dot props dot data 
dot, and we'll just uh, make a bunch of these. Um, so there we go. We have we're we're asking for a prop from um, the parent component. So the parent component of player details now is going to be the player component. So in here we're going to have to render the player details and the prop that we're asking for in player details is called data. So let's give it data. And we'll set that equal to um, the details that we got from this player components uh, parent component, which was the app component. So details is right here. We're going to in the player component set data equal to this dot props dot details. And that will effectively, yeah, you're going to want to close that tag up. That will effectively just exchange hands uh, with the data. So the player component is saying to its parent, the app component, thanks for the details. I'm just going to send it right through to the player details component because they're going to know what to do with it. And then in the player details component, we just got this data, this data prop. Now we can go through that and um, list some information. So we're going to put their position. And we'll just put the right in this too. So we have some good labeling. Um, their height. And we'll also add the height in inches as well. Here's how you add an apostrophe. You have to escape, since apostrophes mean that this is a ring if we want to add an apostrophe to be like six apostrophe five um, you have to escape with this character and then you can make an apostrophe in your string uh, cool so that'll give us our height in inches and then here we will go into the team object. So just once again, team is another object within the object. So we'll go into that and say full name. Cool. And now Beautiful, we get um, some of our data coming through in our card and um, looks good. You will notice that sometimes we have null null for the height. Uh, I guess we also didn't. Uh, yeah, we'll just put height here. And team. Um, but sometimes you get null in there, so that's just because the API didn't have uh, the player's height for whatever reason. Um, so we don't want to show that when, when we get that, and in order to do that, we will just say at the beginning here, this dot copy. We'll start off with a question. We could just say this dot props data height put a question mark 
and that's going to say, that's going to make JavaScript say, is this true or false? And if there is a value in there, then it will render true. If there's nothing but null, it'll render false. So, um, and if it's true, it will do this. But then the way that you say, well, if it's false, I want you to do this, put a colon and then put um, pretty much whatever else you want. So let's put an empty string. And we're gonna see that um, for the players where there's no height, there's, there's nothing there anymore. So you can make that say, sorry, and oh wow, refreshing kind of slow right now. And um, you'll, you'll get that there when you don't have a height. Um, cool, so yeah, do whatever you want with that. And now we are going to link to our team's profiles. So we want to make this guy a link. So instead of just being a P, we're going to change this to an anchor tag. A is a link. And we're going to make its href um, equal to Um, equal to the string for our route, which is team, I think. Is it teams? Yeah, it's teams. Uh, plus uh, our team ID. So this props team. Uh, we want the plus outside the parentheses or uh, quotes there, and plus our team ID. Cool. So then that makes uh, each of our teams a link, and it'll take us to uh, teams four if you're this team. And here's our team component, which we rendered in the router. Um, nothing in here yet because we didn't do anything to it. So we'll just go back to the app. And now we are going to open up our team component. This again is just a big card with, um, yeah, I guess a, a table in here. Put a table in there. Um, we're going to put some team info there and then it's going to show all the players. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to want to somehow say we have all of our stats here. Um, how can we find out which players are on this team? And we're going to do that by looking at the URL, which has the team's ID in there. So we're gonna to wanna to take this. Um, here's, you know, this is probably uh, not amazing, but as a very early JavaScript developer, here's a quick little hack that you could do to, um, to do this, to just ask uh, the right question here. Um, so what we're doing is we're going to use the window object. Uh, and I actually show you guys this. Um, uh, as you can see, there's some console errors, but um, all the all the code in the in the finished file on on GitHub is validated, so you can. You go compare and find out how to get rid of those. But um, if we were to just say window in here, we get this object. It has a ton of information about uh, the window that we're in right now. So for instance, what we're going to use is 
the location, and here's the path name, and there's just the whole name of our path. There's our string that we want, our, our team ID. So we're just going to grab that. And the way we're going to do that is by saying, um, we're also going to start with let uh, team ID equal, and we're going to say window.location. dot path name um, and then we're going to use replace because we don't want that whole path name we just want the ID and we're going to say um, look for this string teams and replace that with nothing so if it replaces teams with nothing, then we're left with just our ID. Perfect. Um, now we're going to use that ID to loop through our stats and uh, create a list of each player um, on just the team of the, of the URL that we're at. So I'll make that list, let players um, and then we're going to loop. Um, I, I is less than stats dot length. Cool, and I increment by one. Um, so now we're going to say if uh, st stats um, at the index i dot data, same way that we're getting all of our data data zero dot team dot ID and we will just say two string as well so that we're comparing strings with strings um, we're gonna say if that equals uh, team ID then uh, append it to players. Oh, I'm talking in Python now, but push it to players. And we're not going to push the player. We're just going to push I, which is our iterator. But what it's also going to represent, since we're going through all of our players, is the position in the stats, oh, where, where am I? The position of that player in the stats. So it's actual index in stats, which will be helpful to us. Uh, cool. So now players is a list of all the indexes of the players on that team of the link that we're at. So now we have that and we could iterate through that. And we're going to do that like, uh, we're actually just going to start with the players um, like this. We're going to say players dot map. Um, we're also going to get our element and our index again. Um, click arrow, and then we're going to render a player component. 
just like in the app component. Ooh, that wasn't what I wanted. And we'll say the details. Got to pass that. Um, pass that the same, same way that we did it in the app component, or just um, stats with our with our index and data zero, and then we're also going to say name. This is nothing new. Let's do our our first name last name combo. Uh, cool, and then make sure that we close that guy. So let's see what we get from this. Oh, it didn't work. That's okay. Um, so let's see what we did wrong. It was saying that team ID is not defined. So what's going on here? Is that team ID? Didn't I say if this equals team ID? Why is this grayed out? Oh, TID. That's not going to work. <laughs> um, cool. So now uh, we're at team 19. Uh, it's this team. Uh, I guess they have Lonzo, so never mind. I don't know who it is. Um, <laughs> and good. So now we want to put, let's just put the team's uh, name right here in the header. So how we do that is um, we're just going to say stats. Um, and then give stats the index of players. Uh, we'll just do the first player. So remember that players is a list of all the players on the team of the route that we're at. So if you just give it any player, we'll just give it the first player. Then we're going to get the index of a player that's on the team that we're at. So that brings us to um, the data then is what we, nope, we want to step out of that. The data is what we want. And we're going to same deal, go to data zero and now dot team dot um, name. Pelicans, that cool? Um, and yeah, we put in some team info as well. Uh, pretty much the same idea though. Um, this is, I set it up like a table so that you can kind of. Okay guys, so we lost part of the video, but um, I believe I know where we left off. We had just finished um, the team component here, and um, we're about to uh, get into some more technical concepts. So um, wardrobe change real quick. And um, what we're going to start with is um, in the team component, uh, within our player details, we still get a link to to the team's profile, which is just going to take us to where we are. So that's not very helpful. We are going to want to create a condition in the player details component where uh, we don't have to always render this. So what we want to say is, uh, and you could do this any number of ways, but it's really, um, you, you just have to create some kind of condition. So what I'm going to say is, where are we? Because this route 
will tell us whether or not we want the player details component to render um, the link to the team or not. So if we're in the team's page, uh, don't render it. If we are only in the app page, uh, then do render it because we, we want to be able to get there. So let's take a look at our code. Um, here in player details, we're going to take this link and wrap it in some curly braces. And then we are going to go right back to that window object. And we're going to say window dot location, same thing as before, dot path name. Wow. Forgot how to type this morning. And then we're going to use the index of method. Okay, so index of, you give it a string and it returns the index of that string in the object that you're applying the method to. So we're applying it to the path name and we are going to tell it to give us the index of the string team. So Right here, we're saying the path name, what is the index of team? And if we're here, it will just be something. It, it, the only thing we care about is if it's a positive number or negative one, because if team is not in the path name, then this will return negative one. So we're just going to say, Is this equal to negative one? And if it is, we're going to return this link and if not, we're going to return um, just an empty paragraph, just nothing. Should be all set there, yep. Maybe not refreshing here. So now we're on a Teams page and we do not see our link to our team. But if we go back to our app, our main page, we still do and we can get to a team. Um, the final little feature that we're going to add is that click functionality where we actually turn the player's name into a button and we can show and hide the details uh, based on that. So that's going to be in our player component where we're going to um, turn this name into a button. We're, we're not actually going to turn it into a button, we're just going to make it clickable. So we're going to give it an on click prop and we're going to say when this element gets clicked, do this. And we're just going to call that a function called toggle details. Uh, cool, so now we have to make that and we'll go const toggle details, set that equal to a function. And open it up and now we're going to introduce the funnest part of React which is state. Um, so state here we have uh, just a blank state constructor right here. Um, state in React is pretty much just saying this is what the component 
is doing right now, but that may change. And what we're going to do with this toggle details is change something. So we're going to set a state variable called, or a state property called details equal to false. So then when we toggle our details, we're going to say this dot set state. Uh, it's not recommended to just say like this dot state dot details and modify this uh, like that. They like it when you use set state. So I'm going to say details. Uh, and set it equal to the opposite of this dot state dot details. Ugh, what am I doing? Yeah, so since this is a Boolean, um, we can just say with the explanation point, whatever this is not, right now, set it to that. Uh, and then we're going to wrap our player details component in curly braces and say, don't just always render player details, but render it when um, the details state is true. So we'll do that by saying this uh, state dot details and then use the and operator which means that uh, we've got to settle both of these conditions to render our player details so now we won't see anything under our players because this is because details is initialized to false and we can click and reveal the details of each player. And you can click that as many times, it'll always toggle on and off. And that is about all that we had to cover today, guys. Um, so now you have the ugliest NBA app of all time. Um, I really only wanted to uh, make this video just to make people think, and I, I hope that um, that you that it did for you guys. And um, I want to hear your feedback about whether or not you guys think this is useful. So, um, yeah, please leave me a comment or what, uh, whatever you're you're thinking about this, and. Um, I know that this like is not a website that anyone's like, oh well, thank God that we have this now because um, as you can see, like that it exists already. But um, the purpose is for it to be taken further. You know, if um, anybody had an idea for an app that requires this base amount of information, then you can start here and then build on it and. Um, definitely create something really cool out of this. I mean, uh, you could have kept going with um, with the team component and uh, gone and made like a division component because we have ooh, we have division in our in our player stats too. So then you can make a page for every team's division and um, then show all the teams and their players in each division. Uh, the, you can just keep building the components like that to get a more comprehensive view of your data. Um, so, or, or you could you, you could really do anything with this. Um, take it as far as you want. Uh, I, I really hope you guys do try things here. Um, so, once again, this is really answering the questions. Uh, how do I get some data? Uh, how do I find some data? How do I get that data for myself? And then how do I display it in an app? 
And um, I really hope that this was helpful for some of you. Um, so that's going to be it. And I will see you guys next time. Thanks a lot. Thank <laughs> you.